Is this it for Cannondale, Santa Cruz, and Cervelo? End of the line for these line of bikes that have been around for over several decades. Is it the end of 2024 for a lot of different brands out there? Ah, oh, it's gonna be interesting to see. But I got some insights I wanna share with you after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin The Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take scary how to use one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles as as the wheel turns, so do the days of our rides. Yeah, this is my topic piece, and we're gonna be talking about one of the major four brands or owners of brands in this case that has apparently been struggling. Um, GC Performance is another channel on here on YouTube. He's a guy out of Florida. And he has a, it looks like a family shop and they've been pretty busy and they have some hearsay of one of the major companies out there. Yeah, jumping on his coattails a little bit, I wanted to bring some insights of what Pawn Holdings is. Well, you may have heard, you know, from other videos of mine, it's like Pawn. Well, no, it's not a Pawn shop. We're talking about Trek, Specialized, and Giant. And that's particular information, rumor, has it, what have you. Basically saying that one of them owes another one a whole bunch of money as well as a part supplier. Okay, you break this down pretty easily for myself, being in the industry and kind of know where these players are. Well, Trek, Trek has deep pockets. They, they're not, well, they may be behind, like all of them are to some level, but they're probably not on a point yet of not paying their bills. So take Trek off that list. The other one would be Specialized. Well, their major backer is Merida. Merida is based out of Taiwan, so they're not going to go anywhere. In addition to that leaves it, well, the Giant and the Pond Holdings Group. Well, it's not Giant because Giant manufactures its own bikes in China. Therefore, it manufactures theirs as well as several other brands in addition to. And China market uh, produces a lot of the lower end department store bikes as well. So light bulb, Pawn Holdings. Well, what's Pawn Holdings? Well, they carry Cannondale, Santa Cruz, Savello, GT, and they also carry Schwinn, Mongoose, a couple other brands that go into the department store. They're actually pretty big. They actually have 25 lines of different bike variations from high end to extremely low end. Reason would believe that if anybody's having with this rumor, having issues of paying the bills, it would be Pond Holdings. Well, Pond Holdings has been around for a while. It's actually a family name, Pond, that still owns it to currently today. And they're just not into the bike industry. Nope, they're into cars and various other industries as well. They are big. So a little bit of history there. They're big. <laughs> and, you know, um, as you'd see it with dollars and cents and it's just probably a cash flow issue with the bigger company but that does make me come to this next kind of conversation i want to talk about well that is pretty much all these big companies are impacted by what's happening in this you know supply chain overdeveloped or overproduced products now the demand is down all those particular things well now we're shifted in a situation where yeah, they're struggling, and but they have deep pockets, and they're you know they're almost too big to fail for their investors. So they're not going to pull out uh, in this particular case. And you know it's going to take a lot more to crush the market. It's going to struggle, yes, but we have already seen so far in the first month or so that there is some silver lining where the smaller shops like myself are starting to get busier. People are getting active, but. We're dealing with a very conscious or price conscious aware customer base. So yeah, they're watching their wallet. So that's actually a good indicator though that people are starting to buy, people are starting to get their bikes tuned up and that kind of thing. It's, start, it's gonna be on the lower end at first, but that is definitely gonna help. Well, what's gonna help these companies is not just one year of sales, it's two years. It's gonna be the three to five year plan for them to recover from this deficit they just endured and still enduring. Because you're looking at, I would say, several companies have reported in the fourth quarter earnings very low. Like uh, Thule is one of them, Mims is another for uh, helmets, and a couple other brands have reported down 
downward percentages, pretty decent in the fourth quarter. Well, yeah, that, that kind of stings, and that's backed up with bad four quarters or quarters prior to that as well. So going to that point, well, yeah, they're going to take a little time to recover from that. Going back to Pon, they have several different brands, and of course they're higher-end brands like Santa Cruz, the CEO stepped down and to take family, time for family. Uh, we all know that's just an excuse that something uh, behind the scenes has happened and it's no longer working for them, which is fine. Um, then you got the Canada, which was going to try to build some bikes in the United States, but I think that was put on ice for the time being. And then set, you know, um, then the other one was other one was Cervelo, which there hasn't been too much news about them, but they're still producing bikes. And some of these bike lines you actually see like in Tour de France and major race circuits and so forth. So they are still very relevant to today in today's market competing against the you know the race circuits and so forth well does that trickle down to the customer well uh, we're all seeing a whole bunch of discounts uh, and i saw one today is like 70 percent off of parts and so forth from Atlantic hollywood so you know they're just dumping the stuff this also reflect shows the downward trend or the wiggle going under, which carried uh, Nuke Proof and a couple other brands that uh, oh, Virtus, and the companies that are carrying them here, like Planet Hollywood and J uh, Jameis Jensen's USA, they're yeah struggling. Um, I don't know if they need to pay the bills <laughs> because they're going under, or they're discounting those bikes by half. Basically, they're taking rid of the inventory because they're no longer going to have any warranties behind it. So they want to just dump the inventory that they have and bring in fresh. They're basically trying, they're all trying to deal with their cash flow issues at the end of the day. So this rumor of one of the big four is struggling, it's just a, it's most likely a cash flow issue. You're still going to see the Cervellos come out, still see the Santa Cruz, you're going to still see the Canadels, but all those companies have changed quite significantly. Well, this is what I want to talk about addition to, and I did a little research on here. And in compared to my market, you know, we got Trek and Specialized, and they had opened up several corporate stores here in the last three to five years. Three specialized stores within pretty much a stone throw away from each other, and you got two Trek stores that are corporate owned. In addition to their Shields as well, which is Trek's biggest um, dealer besides themselves. Well, looking at that and looking at the numbers, I had the question of, oh, well, you got these players and they're taking over the retail market, right? Chuck has been doing this and doing it very aggressively. Specialized is taking up on the coattails. Okay, what does this really affect to our markets of what we are living in, our neighborhoods and so forth into the small bike shops? Well, let's start off with Trek. Trek has... I you know, Googled it up and it was like 1,700 independent bike dealers. Well, that's bad old data because if they had 1,700 dealers, well, they have over pretty close 1,000 corporate orange stores now, which they're kind of coining them as independent bike dealers. So you're saying one out of three Trek stores at this point in the United States could very well be really independent bike dealer, and the other two of the three are corporate owned. Or it's getting really close to that trend. Definitely in our market here in Colorado, it is definitely that. There is no Trek owned store or Trek uh, independent stores in the Tri City area that I'm living in in, North, in NoCo. So, so you got that. Then I looked up Specialized, and Specialized is a little trickier because they went under a different names with their corporate owned store, or they kept them with the ones they did the acquisition, or they actually picked up this Insight Insightcycle name which and nobody knows it here but apparently they're in california or whatever yeah doing a little scratching and picking at the stickers on this one it turns out they'd probably have over 100 if not more maybe closer to 200 stores that are corporate owned and that's pretty pretty good chunk um you know far shy about 10 percent of what truck has done and they're definitely behind the eight ball there well the other one is guess what pawn well, they, uh, <laughs> yeah, they say, you know, that under the Google searches, uh, they don't own any independent bike dealers. Well, they do. They have a company called Mike's Bikes that they purchased in the last year or two in California, and they're expanded to, I would say, about 25 stores. So not nearly the significant as specialized, and I am close to what Trek is, but it's still going that direction. And actually, Pon undercut one of Trek acquisitions here in Colorado. Elevation Cycles, which had three or four locations in South Denver, Colorado, 
and they were in talks with Trek to sell to them. And lo and behold, Pawn swooped in and bought them. <laughs> Interesting. You got a three trifecta purchasing of bike shops. So if you're a bike shop and you're a bike shop owner and you carry one of these various lines and you're just done and you have pretty decent sales, you're probably looking to sell to either one of those companies. Reason being is it's tough being an independent bike dealer. And if you're in that medium range, the little upper end range, the top end is being undercut by the actual companies themselves. There's a little bit of story, a little bit of news on top of all of that. Uh, what you gonna think of it? I don't know, it might, it's definitely changing the landscape for sure. But what we're talking about is the independent bike dealers that are small like me, basically really small shops or garage shops, well, we're starting to flourish right now. So we're gonna be healthy, healthier, for a long term, because we're a lot more adaptable, which I've mentioned in a video before, that we can take on the David and Goliath story for sure. But you know, if you're in that medium range, you still that's that's a tricky bit. Example, Pro's Closet. They were just direct to consumer for selling used bikes for the longest time. In the last two to three years, they switched to I have a showroom now and we do service. So they basically made themselves a bike shop in Lafayette, Colorado. Checked it out, beautiful section cut out of their big warehouse. And yeah, I'm sure they're struggling and I'm sure they have cash flow problems as well. I haven't seen very much uh, advertising from them lately because they may have let go of that individual. But anywho, um, they've had several rounds of cutbacks and um, layoffs as well. And you look at the other big companies like REI, they've had several thousands of people that they're cutting as well. And, you know, UPS and everything. So it's a market adjustment combination of a reflection of what's going to happen down the road. What's going to happen down the road? That's a good question. If I had a crystal ball, which I have a very small one, but it's not very accurate. Um, but in any case, what's probably going to happen most likely is, yeah, they're going to have a slow dig out and they're still going to be strong and they're still going to produce bikes, but they're not going to change their behavior too much. <laughs> Are they going to make cheaper bikes for people getting in the, in, into cycling? <laughs> no, they're going to still kind of stay the course of their little, I mean, they, they can't cut that out. You know, they're they're, they're, they're just too big on their brand. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but that gives us great opportunity for people like myself to either bring in lines that do carry a little bit lower in, like Jameis or Fuji or something like that, uh, if you're a brick and mortar. Or for myself, I really dive into the used market. And the used prices on bikes, as buying them used from individuals have gone down significantly where they were prior to uh, COVID, which is great because that provides a good, you know, gives me opportunity to pick better quality bikes to have a better product at the end of the day for those getting into in any kind of riding. So for me, that's, that's a win-win. And, you know, the, yeah, the margins might go down a little bit, but at the end of the day, I'm still producing and functioning. And you can see my overhead is quite low. And for being a very low overhead and cost of running business, it, I'm able to sustain it so far, and with this upward trend, it doesn't take much for me to dig out of my hole that I've dug myself in the last year, or we're going to look at it take me maybe a year versus these other big corporations going to take them up to five years. And what they're doing to themselves, basically right now, you can buy, why buy used when you can buy new for just a little bit more um, in a sense of those upper end bikes, uh, some parts. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially when they're doing 70% off. I mean, there's some good deals to be had, but that's all gonna shake out at some point here within the next year because those parts are gonna run out and then they're gonna be replenished by more corrected numbers of inventory and so forth. The other back end issue is one of the major suppliers probably is not going to sustain either JB Importers, QBP, uh, Holly, or maybe they're even still around. Uh, but anyway, there's you know these other companies sub sub warehouses basically I want to call them. They feed into a lot of the independent bike dealers their stuff. You know, they Trek has their own stuff direct. Um, Specialized has some of theirs too. And, but when you got all like the SRAM chains and you know Shimano chains and so forth, the whole dynamics has changed quite a bit in that perspective. Well, that's a pretty aggressive market for them and they don't have very deep margins. And 
for them to start shrinking up warehouses that just opened up, they're closing and kind of backpedaling. That kind of shows you too what's what's going on there. So the market got ballooned after COVID and now it's shrinking and it's very cold waters. <laughs> it's not warming up, but us independent ones, we can swim closer to a warmer springs <laughs> and hopefully we'll all sustain a little bit better. Well, what does that mean for the consumer? Right now, it's a great time to buy stuff if you want to buy anything. I want to buy anything if you didn't really need it, but there's good opportunities out there to purchase, get ready for the season, that kind of thing, if you're looking for something new. Uh, buyer beware of those brands that are actually going out like um, Virtus and uh, New Proof. If you're going to buy into them, you're definitely not going to have any warranties or uh, that kind of nature. And as the discounted bikes, I don't know, I saw like an $800 road bike on sale from $1,500, which is almost half off, but it has junk componentry with the crappy aluminum frame frame well you can get yourself a used bike that i provide or somebody provides under a thousand probably a full carbon bike with better componentry even though it might be the, not the latest and greatest but it's still very very valuable to what is performed today in that case here we are so hey hope this gives you some insights of what's going on and it's not as doom and gloom as it seems to be. I think there's a lot more corrections in the big wigs and the big companies and this little guys. We're plugging along. We're doing just fine and we're going to be doing better. And everything we've done to survive, sustain, is just going to make us stronger the year that we're faced right now. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of a little chilly because it is winter and it's cold with the garage door open. Anyway, from the garage, please feel free to put some comments down. There's additional information. Uh, in the description and if it's nice in your neck of the woods please go for a ride it's one of those things just just get out there go for a ride. again from the garage have a wonderful day and until next time